Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. On this episode, I speak with Steve Mordew, a Microsoft MVP and a fellow attendee at the recent Directions North America event. We talk about some of the announcements made at the event, reaction from partners, and some of the implications for for VARs, for ISVs, and uh, for Dynamics customers. We also look ahead a little bit at uh, where Microsoft might go from here with uh, decisions, timing, and uh, other news that might be expected down the road. Okay. Hey, Steve. Morty, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, Jason. Glad to be here again. One of my favorite uh, places to be is talking to you about all things Dynamics. Yeah, it's uh, it's always a, a good time, especially after uh, in the sort of... Uh, uh, recuperation phase after uh, uh, an eventful week like the one um, we just ha- you and I just had along with uh, about 800 other uh, people who care about the dynamic space uh, down in Orlando and you're you're back home I assume I am back home yeah you yeah. know I, uh, I I originally wasn't even going to go to that event you know I'm not a nav partner and uh, but I heard uh, I heard some rumors that there might be some discussion there about stuff that would be relevant to any SMB focused partner. So I went over there. Boy, am I glad I did because uh, it seemed to be a, a few balls were dropped there. And, and definitely some information came out there that affects more than just the NAV partners. Although, definitely, I think it, it mostly impacts them. They're the ones that really need to be paying attention to you know things that were said and things that will be said in the coming days. But, but there were some impacts on uh, Dynamics partners. Partners. Yeah, and, and 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 one of the highest uh, level, I guess, things I, I I sensed in this is that as time goes along, these things are, are these announcements and, and decisions are going to impact every almost every partner. Um, like you said, whether you care about Nav or not, there was so much to take away from that event just to know where Microsoft stands. Right, because where they stand on Nav is now sort of directly related to where they stand on CRM in, in so many ways. Yeah, and I think where that really kind of summed up was the this idea that they're they're going to change direction around how they're going to market and kind of move away from this um, customer size segmentation and instead kind of build around a customer uh, feature need segmentation. If you look through that filter, suddenly this business edition, uh, you know, which is really designed around a size customer. Uh, doesn't make sense and, and doesn't look like a, a good plan moving forward. I think they, they they picked their head up and thought, you know, we see where we want to get. And we're not sure we're on the best path to get there. So the idea that, you know, we're going to get rid of the, the word uh, business edition um, is probably what sparked the most interest for CRM partners and NAV partners as well. Because uh, we've had business edition apps, you know, in development, uh, you know, we'd worked with that team on that and, and they're in preview now. And, you know, that, that kind of sent everybody in a little confusion or are, are these gone or, or what's going on with these, but uh, not, not gone, but they definitely are taking a little different direction with it. Um, yeah, those are, those are good points. I, I would just add that um, I think you can really sort of, to me, when I, I, I was getting a sense of really how Microsoft is, is being, you know, frankly, adapting um, and, and trying to, f- if, if things haven't been working, uh, sort of working out quite the way they expected with the approach they took, that they're that they're basically just adapting it. And as they look for what's working and what's not, they're going to make these changes. And I think that's, you know, all in all, that's, that's a smart thing to do um, when you're trying to take on some very complex challenges, like reaching such a broad range of, um, of businesses, whether it's based on verticals or based on sort of the size of the businesses and the number of licenses you're going to be selling them. Um, it, it's certainly not an easy task to come up with a scheme that's going to work. I, unfortunately, I think trying to adapt now is just going to make, I think one of the reasons for the delay is there's just so much complexity now in trying to set a course to say, okay, we have this approach that's in in market right now and the partners are are, are working against it. And we now have to figure out a way to, you know, shift that in a way that's not going to throw everybody off that they can keep selling uh and that that's not going to look horrible that, that's going to look you know reasonable to the customers when you explain the new approach versus the old approach and so all those complexities are sort of wrapped up in the decision which can't be an easy uh you know easy thing to execute on if you're microsoft 
No, it, it really can't. And, you know, uh, change when you, when you see that a path you're headed down is, is, is not going to get where you want. And, you know, you can applaud that they recognize that early enough and, and, and make a change in direction. But yeah, you know, there's a lot of partners out there that just don't like change and, you know, they're, oh, yeah. you know, they, they've got their arms crossed. They've, they've spent energy and thought down this particular path and, you know, they, uh, you know, kind of feel like maybe they're getting jerked in another direction, but, uh, you know, I would prefer that than continue down a path that they can already see isn't going to get there. And I think partners just need to be a little patient. But when you're when you're shifting a model and and really on the CRM side, this is mostly going to boil down to the licensing, which we just went through, you know, right. recently a pretty significant overhaul of the licensing, a pretty complex licensing structure, hard to explain. And almost all of that now needs to really be re-looked at when you look at it through this new you know, we're going to sell the product by feature as opposed to by size customer. So the whole, the whole, that whole matrix has to get tossed and a whole new one has to be created. And, you know, the worst thing they can do is land in the market quickly um, with a matrix that hasn't really been thought out. And then we are dealing with continuous changes while it's in flight. Yeah. So, you know, the decision to, you know what, guys, we're just going to, you know, we, we, we we weren't happy with that direction. We see a better path, but we're going to need a little more time to digest to make sure that we land, you know, land it right. Um, you know, it is actually good news. You know, the, they haven't turned off the product. I mean, we still have the same right. thing to sell tomorrow that we have to sell today. Nothing changes. Got a little more runway to sell what we're selling today. Um, and, and we'll have something else in the future, but you know, partners can get impatient. Yeah, no, I think we see that on, you know, uh, on the sales and marketing side with, uh, I guess, especially with sales, because there are now going to be sort of these two tiers of sales app, at least, at least to start, right? And, yep. and when they come out with this new pricing, there's going to be two tiers of sale, sales app. Um, they're both going to be sort of out there and available for whoever wants to choose them. I think my take on the way it was going to sort of every, or originally roll out is you're going to have the existing enterprise level sales you know, based on core CRM, you're going to have um, the uh, the lower level sales that they started previewing now, and um, and then I think they're going to start, sh you know, they're going to keep evolving the enterprise one so that the two sort of come into not parity like harmony, like they're both based on the same UI as well as the same underlying code, which I guess are the same underlying capabilities, which they're going to have. Well, they have the same underlying capabilities from the start, right? But uh, I forget where I was going with that, but you, you know, you'll, you'll have that flexibility so that if you're a, a smaller, a small business with complex cap with complex, um, requirements and, and, and sophisticated processes, you can go for the, 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 the more complex one and, um, get benefit out of it or vice versa. If you're a big company with, um, with simpler sales, sales needs, you can buy the smaller one and, um, and, and get the value you need from there. Yeah, I think this is also going to kind of allow them to merge a couple of paths that they've been on uh, to a to a, a single point. You know, the the business edition UI uh, was designed not just for you know a smaller business, but but the UI itself was kind of a testing ground for what the ultimate UI for the whole product would look like, the, that unified interface. And it was a great place for them to start and say, okay, let's use the new <laughs> UI here. And the enterprise skew behind it that's going to be rolling out, there is this, this concept that it's going to, you know, it's going to include some components. It'll be a little later before it has all of those components. So in order for this, this model, this new licensing model of based on features to really work, it's going to have, kind of have to sit on one UI. So this gives them time to get that UI that we know of as business edition really to be that entire sales or really the entire application UI. Mm -hmm. And then once it's a single UI, it's just a matter of laying a filter over to say, okay, Mr. Customer, you're looking at this UI and you can do this, that, and the other. Uh, you can't do these other things at this price point. And then if you want to pay a higher price point, we just turn on those capabilities. But, you know, it's not like we're flipping to a different UI. And they were pretty clear about that there will only be one sales app. So really, that's the only way that that could make sense is that, you know, it's one app on one UI. Yeah. 
and they're not and they're not going backwards. So it's it's going to be the business edition UI. You know, you and I happen to find ourselves in the same sort of Q and A session with uh, with Microsoft um, program manager several, Kishan. Several times. <laughs> I'm thinking of the one that was led by Kishan Chetan, yep. Um, yep. where he just took he talked a little bit, but he mostly took questions from from partners about what was coming with uh, with the sales app in and, and the marketing app as well and it's you know from my perspective sitting there hearing people's questions and their their take on what they were hearing i mean partners make this partners i shouldn't say make this partners um find complexity in in almost any decision microsoft's going to make and what i mean is they partners think about how these changes how they will have to sort of adapt to these changes and in their own business and their clients businesses um, or their client engagements in, in ways that I don't think Microsoft anticipates. I, I certainly don't as, as someone who's neither Microsoft nor a partner. Um, but just the, the, the number of ways in which they, they were, um, and it was only a few people, right? It was a very, very small session, but the way yeah, people was. were considering the ways they might have to choose between the, 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 the small versus the big sales app and, um, you know, the way they might have to, to pay for one versus the other and building their solution or, you know, the, whether or not tiered levels of an ISV solution could possibly work or not. I mean, they were just wrapping that, that, that got, they were getting themselves wrapped up in those details so quickly um, that you kind of see what, think- what, what they're up against. I think partners as a whole tend to see the worst case scenario yeah, uh, yeah. In, in everything that's, that's that's presented, you know, and I, I don't know, I've always been the opposite. I always see best case scenario. My mm-hmm. wife sees worst case scenario and neither of those ever happen. It always lands somewhere in between. Um, but definitely partners coming into these things are, you know, what's the catch and, and, and start assuming worst case scenarios. And it, it's, it makes it so difficult, I think, for Microsoft to try and convey a message about some new direction. I mean, you know, there's almost no way that they can convey some information to a crowd like that that's looking for worst case without them all blowing up and running around like the house is on fire. They almost have to go through that, you know, that little birth of an announcement yeah, yeah. And, the, and the pain of that to get to the other side where they've calmed down a little bit, looked at what, what was intended. Maybe some more clarification is added, you know, and then we see it time and again after a few weeks, they're all like, oh, that's all it was. You know, <laughs> so they definitely they definitely see everything in a worst case scenario. And I'm not I'm not minimizing you know, the directional change. I think it's significant. Uh, that Microsoft is is going here, uh, but I don't think it's a significant direction or a change into the wrong direction. I think this is this is actually a direction, you know, that that they probably should have taken in the first place. And a couple of the folks that I was talking to, you know, we were we were saying, for example, that you know you make decisions at the time based on what information you have and what things look like. And going back, you know, it's it's one thing to Monday morning quarterback, but if you actually put yourself back at that point in time, you know, this seemed like a good idea. Now we're looking at this new mm-hmm. approach and, you know, we're all thinking, yeah, why did we do that in the first place? Well, it, it, it didn't become evident until we'd gotten down the path this far. And I think that's just a challenge for business when you're looking at change in directions that it, you know, you can't, you can't see the future for certain. You can just have an idea. And then once you get there, suddenly you realize, Oh, this is a little different than we expected. Um, and back up. I, I will say that I'm pretty impressed with with the transparency that we're seeing from Microsoft. And you were in the session with Keisha and he pretty much stood up there and said, ask me anything. I'll tell you if I know. Right. And, and that, that's not something that that I think that's new. I think that's that's more recent that we're seeing that from Microsoft. I think they've suffered in the past sometimes from from not being transparent enough about what's going on and not getting enough, you know, input about what's going on until decisions are in concrete. But, you know, we're definitely seeing a lot more, you know, of a request for that kind of feedback before things are in concrete. The downside of that is, you know, there's a tendency you might, you know, <laughs> screw the channel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the way I, one of the ways I was looking at it was uh, we're in a new era with CRM now because, um, you know, the era of Bob Stutz has passed and, and, and Jujar has now uh, left. So we're sort of left with, uh, there's no exact leader yet on the CRM side, uh, sort of one singular leader, at least as far as I can tell, um, for, at least no, for, R- for R&D. Yep, there is. Oh, who's that? Yep, there is. James Phillips. 
Okay, well, James Phillips, so. yes, but I think um, you know he manages a lot of a lot of products, and I think there's going to have to be someone under him who's sort of the the equivalent of of a Marco or of um, uh, I'm blanking on Drew the name. Uh, well, Jujar, yeah, um, in the past. Um, I, I think there's going to be someone else who's going to be sort of a that person uh, on the R&D program management side um, under James Phillips is, my, I guess, what I meant to say there. Um, yeah, there, it, there may be. Definitely right now he's running I, I, I the hear ball. there's probably a search going on to, to find someone like that because yeah. James Phillips has too many products to be the person answering CRM questions uh, about the yeah. CRM roadmap himself, I would think. Um, but I mean, there's clearly people like, like Kishan and, 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 and Param who, uh, Cologne, who's his, who's his boss, I yep. believe. And, um, you know, you have people like, uh, Angela Bandlow and Kate, Case Hertog, who are also, um, very senior product team people who I'm sure are, are you know, um, managing things. So it's not, I'm not to say, not to say that it, by any means that, that the product is sort of rudderless or anything like that. Um, there's still obviously an experienced team there, but um, but without those people, I, f- I, my, I feel like they're they're f- maybe now that some of the products that 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 past executives have acquired are, are out the window, and other ones are well integrated um, because they you know because they align with the with the with the platform the the base platform, they now have something they can really focus on and move forward on without as much. Um, without as much distraction. And so I think the focus on sales and the focus on, um, uh, customer, you know, they didn't really talk about customer service, but I think, you know, all the, all the different service elements, field and project and right kind of traditional customer service. Um, all those things are going to, I think, get a little, I think, um, a little bit more sort of direct, direct focus, um, that was getting pulled away by, do we keep Paratur alive? Do we keep MDM dynamics marketing alive? Um, yep. those things have been maybe stripped away and maybe that brings some clarity to the team. Um, they seem very clear on, on, on how the sales thing is going to go and marketing too. Um, they didn't talk much about service, but that was my, that was one of my impressions. Um, and just in hearing, hearing, uh, him, uh, him speak, uh, Kishan. Yeah, I think that, I think the products, you know, they're, they're really separate sides. We've got the product side where, you know, where Kishan and Prom sit, and and the product's solid, you know. The, the the product's solid. It's it's you know they're building more, they're evolving, but there, there's there's not any disarray or or issues really, in my opinion, on the product side itself. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. they're coming out with new versions. There's things in preview. They're evolving. They're responding. This is uh, the the biggest thing here, I think, from directions was less about product and definitely more about strategy, and. And I think that that's where right now, you know, uh, Phillips has his hand on that rudder as, as well he should, because that's key across that whole stack and then everything that's going on there. Um, and we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm, we're expecting a blog post from him, you know, any day okay. now. Okay. Um, you know, to kind of, you know, uh, clarify uh, yeah, his would, thoughts and, and direction. I would say in the next, what's today, the 21st, I would say in the next week and a half, right? <laughs> probably probably, yeah, probably I, by the I, end I of next week, likely. Yeah, you know, he, he, just came, he just came back from Inner Circle, so he heard from those groups. He's obviously gotten reports from his team at Directions, mm-hmm. heard from those groups about, you know, partner feedback. So I would assume that uh, ideally maybe before uh, Ignite, he'd love to get something out there, uh, you know, just to make sure everybody understands, you know, what, what's going on um, and before, uh, you know, Directions EMEA. Um, so I, I would expect to see something from him pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the other things I was thinking about uh, from from directions as we we're getting ready to talk here was um, s- trying to find, you know, alignment or places where there's a, maybe a bit of difference um, between this between the CRM side and the the ERP side. And, and I think that's more and more important now that, uh, you know, going back to what I, I, I was saying at the very start here, um, which is that I think they can't almost they're almost they can't be considered two separately anymore that they are going to move together. They're going to move, move ahead with the other in mind to some degree. And, you know, like for example, with CDS and um, how those, how that was talked about uh, by different people, by different Microsoft folks at the event, I think they're all on board with the fact that it is, um, you know, a, a key sort of piece of, you know, integration technology. But um, my sense was that, um, uh, Marco has a sort of a much stronger view that it is absolutely key to what he's doing. And um, 
you know, Kishan also talked about it. Um, and, and granted, it was different venues and, and so so forth. But yep. um, I think he's uh, he has he's a little less focused on it. He's probably just a little more focused on some of these other things that um, that he uh, that he's weighing, uh, that, and that that team is on the CRM side is weighing for the future and for their roadmap. I don't know. What did you think? You know, I think yeah, we've kind of looked at these products as platforms. Like CRM is a platform, mm-hmm. and Nav is a platform. AX is a platform. That's a good theme, yeah. Uh, and and I, I think ultimately, what we're really going to find ourselves looking at is those are actually platforms on top of CDS, which is going to be the real platform underneath all of it. And and almost in a way, the whole CRM thing becomes an app on CDS. It's, it's like there's this new level being brought in underneath everything right. that, that really makes it all work. I mean, that's what makes it all work. That's what gives you that that one sweet, uh, you know, end-to-end experience is, is CDS. It's the only way to do it. Um, and I, I think we're going to see that being looked at a little differently uh, going forward. Right. And, and that was the sense I got. Uh, pl- you know, platforms might be the, the biggest, um, sort of the biggest overarching story of this. And, and, and with with CDS, like what I what I was hearing from Marco was we we absolutely have to get C, CDS technology and, and capabilities expanded as quickly as we possibly can, so that we can build out as many of these sort of inter app scenarios um, to their fullest as quickly as we possibly can. And he seemed to really have an urgency with that. Um, I I don't know on the CRM side if they're thinking as much about it. I think they certainly understand that too. Um, but yeah, it's a, a platforms. I mean, because that's not the only CDS is not the only platform th- place where that theme came up. Um, now they think back on it. Um, I think the, just on the Nav side, they they want Nav to be more of a platform. That was the whole um, idea mm-hmm. between in, in, um, encouraging. If you want to use the word encouraging, um, people uh, VARs to white label Nav. Um, they want basically everything to be sort of built on either either the the Tenerife app or even a, a level lower where it's sort of customizations on sort of the underlying foundation of Tenerife. Um, and then that com- that almost uh, sort of the analog uh, to that on the CRM side came up right away too. And there was a executive Q and a uh, about the future of the, of the CRM apps is the XRM. I mean, I, I, I can't remember the last time I heard a, CR- a CRM focused uh, manager talk about the XRM platform as if it, as if it, you know, sort of existed as not to say they're making it a product yet. They haven't said that anything yeah, like that, but, yeah. uh, but just acknowledging it as sort of this, this thing that's worth discussing, um, at least when I was around. Um, so that was, that was fascinating to hear that. Cause I mean, it's, it's been that thing for the years that, that sort of CRM nuts always have sort of pined for. You know, I think one of the challenges that, that Microsoft is suffering uh, through and, and working through with all of these platforms is none of these were ever built for the cloud originally. Uh, mm-hmm. th- there was no component of Dynamics that was designed for cloud until they moved it to cloud. And, and you know, a large uh, percentage of that product is still the same product. So, you know, they're really having to, to, to convert whole parts of these products into something that 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 works even better in SaaS, and that's that's been a huge project. And when you take something that was never designed to do, you know what we're trying to do with it, and you know make it you know best in class in that area. Yeah, and true. You also have com- uh, competition to look at. You know, there's it's not like you know Microsoft and our partners just get to operate over here in a vacuum and do whatever we want. You know, there's competitors out there, and they're not stagnant. You, know, you can look at what competition is doing today and and react to it, but they're not just going to sit there and let you react. You know they're going to react to your reaction, and that's why it kind of stays in this flux. And yeah, one of the things yeah. coming back to that XRM platform, you know, there's lots of partners that have used out of the box stuff and then built a lot of custom capabilities. Sometimes more custom capabilities than out of the box capabilities that they're using. The Salesforce has had for years a platform license, which, you know, the low cost license offered ISVs um, as kind of a, you know, here's our naked platform, build whatever you want and bundle it with our license. And Microsoft hasn't gotten all the way down that road yet. And frankly, they couldn't, you know, they built a product that had sales service and marketing all mushed together into one big product. So, you know, step one as we got to parse these components, you know, into their own pieces, make them apps. 
Um, and the business edition uh, app was really kind of the first experiment down that path, I think. I mean, it is an app on the platform and it's not, you know, coming out of the platform. It's something installed on top of it, just like any other solution a partner might build and install. And that's where they're moving with, you know, all of those pieces. Field service is already there because they acquired it. Uh, PSA is already there because they built it kind of as a fork of field services. So they still need to get these core sales uh, service and marketing kind of extracted from the platform into apps. Right. But when they do that, what that leaves them with is really this quote unquote naked platform layer, which is XRM. And so that's, that's kind of, I think where we're going to see some interesting stuff happening in the future. Uh, with ISV embed is, is, is kind of an angle on that. Although I think that still requires you to have at least one of the first party apps. Um, I'd love to see them launch a platform only, mm -hmm. uh, a lower cost license that basically an ISV maybe has some core, some core pieces that are necessary for anything to function, but they build, you know, 95% of the functionality is, is ISV built. Uh, and then when you circle back to that kind of powered by Microsoft, it makes some sense, you know, because at that point, it is your app powered by Microsoft. Right. And that's the initiative of the the company that chooses to go that route um, yep. to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's certainly something that it's just so interesting to see that that, that idea hasn't lost any of its luster. Um, that, that still It still seems like it could, it could work. Um, and this they actually seem to be warming up to it as time yeah. goes on. Cause, Maybe you know, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd asked them about that earlier and got kind of told, yeah, absolutely not. We'll never ever do that. But, right. Right. Uh, now it seems to be getting closer and closer to where, you know, they will do that. And yeah. you know, like you say, just for that certain type of partner wants to go down that ISV route, and for the rest of the partners, they've got all their first party apps. And I, I imagine it would be, that's, if it ever does come to pass, it won't be free for all. I, I don't know how, how Salesforce does it, but I imagine it'll be on a case-by-case -case basis, Microsoft signing off on plans to build, you know, this kind of app, you know, so that it's not the yeah, new, the new know, field yeah. service or the, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You're not going to be able to buy a discounted platform license and build a basic little sales app and sell it yeah. as a sales tool uh, yeah. competing against the first party. And that's not the kind of discipline. Microsoft's more disciplined than that. They would, yeah. they just wouldn't, they just wouldn't sign off on uh, you know, that, that, that kind of a program. Um, yeah, I agree. To, to, for for the, partners. Yeah. I think really the biggest challenge Microsoft still has, taking all this strategy direction aside, because frankly, I think that's a lot more noise than what's actually going to, um, than the actual result that it's mm -hmm. going to have on partners. You know I mean? When you think about a basic version of sales versus a more complicated version of sales, you know, that's still your SMB versus enterprise product. You know, it's just yep. a lot of it's going to be semantics. The bigger problem they've got to solve for and it was kind of evidenced here, and we'll see the opposite at uh, CRM Extreme, is, is these partner groups do not intermingle. Uh, they still don't. They That's swim in their own pools. Yeah. You know, we, we, got, we got AX partners in their pool. We got NAV partners in their pool and CRM partners in their pool, and they just don't swim across the pools. I saw, I mean, as I said, I wasn't even planning on going. Uh, I went, I looked around, and I saw... I don't know, out of 800 people, maybe a dozen CRM partners that, and, and all of them had said it was their first time. So, I mean, that's encouraging, but that's a dozen. And I have yeah. no doubt at CRM Extreme, um, it'll, be, it'll the be the opposite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll be missing a handful of ERP partners, the, the brave and the curious, but, but that's a problem for Microsoft. They really need to be able to get these partners to swim across those pools and common data service, I think, is mm -hmm. part of making that happen because it swims across all those pools. It's underneath all of them. Um, so we'll see. I, I, I've never felt they've done enough to enable that motion beyond talking about it. And I've always felt that Microsoft actually could do more. Um, and maybe it's maybe it's heavy on the partner partner. Maybe you know App Source, um, you know, comes into play. Um, I, I don't know, but they're, they they got to solve that one. Yeah, or um, or maybe make one factor could be you know incentives and and guidelines for how partner how partners what partners are expected to sell, um, you know perhaps those those guidelines shift more over time toward, um, you know for like this is a slightly different but you know this thing with with um, you know 
really encouraging, let's say, white label um, solutions built on top of, of, of Tenerife. Um, you know, even if that's not mandated, uh, one way that, that Microsoft certainly could incentivize um, you know, partners to do that by making it much more attractive to go to market with that than to go to market with a, a sort of a straight Microsoft, um, you know, cookie yep. cutter ERP. And it, it might become that, that much more uh, interesting to partners to, to, that they won't lead with, you know, uh, with the white bread version. You know, Microsoft has never hesitated in the past to hold out a bunch of carrots over where they like mm -hmm. you to go. Um, and sometimes I've seen some pretty large bushels of carrots uh, held out yeah. and still seen partners not go. So it's it's harder to incentivize partners to move, I think. I mean, frankly, that, that room full of 800 people, the majority of them, uh, from what I could gather in talking, uh, seem to still be in the on-premise world. Uh, they, they haven't made the transition over to, to any sort of a cloud product yet. Yeah, I mean, and, the business edition finance and operations has had, you know, not all that much um, traction. And, and most of them have some experience either with outsourcing it or uh, doing it themselves of, of setting up NAV in, in, on Azure, for example, or in a private hosting. So they've got that experience. And most of them have dipped their toe in with the Azure, with the, with the SaaS product, but it just hasn't sold that much. So no one's, no one's doing enough of it um, to really yeah. make it. Can, uh, so I mean, it's, that's a challenge for them. You know, yeah, on the yeah. CRM side, it's just the opposite. And, Mo yeah. Most deployments today are cloud, uh, yeah. starting out with cloud, and, and it's just not happening in some of those other and, pieces. So getting them all in sync is going to be a trick. Yeah, and, and the other side of it, from maybe what I was saying before, but it, I think you've you've made this point in the past, is that, you know, people people running a business that as a Microsoft partner aren't necessarily good at at, at multiple things and. Um, you know, certain kinds of organizations can manage having different practices for, let's say, ERP and CRM and, and you know, bringing them together if they're, if they're really adept. Um, but, you know, um, as someone, you, you know, who you, you just, uh, you know, shed a component of, of your business to, for better focus and you wrote about it. Um, yep. But you can certainly, that sort of speaks to the challenge of, of trying to get, um, get those groups together, right? Oh, I'm I'm as guilty as as anybody of uh, you know swimming in my pool. Um, right. You know, I I'm part of the. Problem. You're running a business. You're looking for the way to be you know most effective and and ex execute right. You know, the, the best you can, right? And you know, when you look at you know some of the things that that they do would encourage that motion and some kind of work against it. You know, the the Tenerife, the white label solution idea, whether it's mandated or not, however that ends up uh, shaking out uh, later, the idea that I could build a white label solution because I've got a, a big industry focus uh, is awesome. You know, uh, uh, Spaceships Incorporated, uh, uh, you know, ERP, that's great, but it's ERP. I don't really have the, I can't wrap that white label across other parts of the stack because it's just not a way those other parts are offered. So it'd be my white label DRP and for sales is going to be Dynamics 365. So if they can get that other ISV embed or platform layer or whatever they want to call it, you know, to where those, you know, where I could have, you know, uh, spaceships yeah. incorporated, you know, is an all in one application, you know, that, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. There's going to be, uh, it you know, different strategies or maybe it's really just tactics to, uh, to start, to start putting that thought into partners' minds and start building it into customers, you know, plans as well to say, maybe you're only buying, uh, maybe we can only sell you Tenerife today. But, um, you know, if you start, if we start accounting for the fact that this data needs to be centralized and CDS is the place to do it, you know, let's invest in putting that, um, uh, plumbing in now, so that as soon as we can build out a connection, you know, you have it uh, ready to go um, and be pulled into whatever other apps need it. Uh, maybe yeah, that's, you know, you know, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. It could be, you know, I mean, these, these teams for these products within Dynamics 365, you know, they don't all sit in the same building. Nope. You know, they're, they have different same leadership. Countries. They're in different yep. buildings. Yep. At, at some point they converge. And right now it's probably at the James Phillips level. So you got, you know, James is trying to herd these these three different groups of cats. And I know they talk to each other, but, you know, I can't possibly talk to each other enough. So there's, you know, they kind of 
are, are not on parallel paths. Yeah. You know, they're on, they're on kind of their independent paths and, and you look for some commonality where they're going to kind of merge, but uh, it's just the nature of the beast. You get different platforms, different teams, different objectives, and trying to get them all, you know, to line up. I mean, that, they, they got they got problems with partners getting them to swim from pool to pool, but they got to get their own team swimming across those pools too. And uh, you know, that's that's an area that I'm sure is a focus of theirs internally. But that's that's another challenging one for them. Yeah, that's a that's a real, um, int- very interesting leadership uh, leadership challenge for Microsoft between uh, Phillips and probably some of his his peers um, at that sort of corporate vice president level. You know, I would say today, uh, I, don't, I don't know when you're going to publish this, but, um, you know, partners are probably going to be a little confused about what does all this mean, you know, for my business and what do I do now? And what about, you know, what the plans have been? And I get that. I mean, especially if you've been out there as a partner in the SMB space, talking to customers about this future, you know, business edition, and now suddenly that that thing you've been talking about, at least as you know, it is going away. There's probably ways to handle that conversation, more of a renaming than going away. But, you know, there's going to be some some turmoil. But the fact is we don't have it to sell today, and we're not going to have it to sell till the spring. So, you know, I would I would say to partners that are out there today, yeah, keep, keep your eye closely on what's going on here. But I wouldn't obsess over it. Uh, you still got to make a living uh, and you have the same products to sell tomorrow that you that you have today. Uh, the same promos are and pricing is all being extended through this whole period. So, you know, I don't know about right. all the partners. We're busier than we, we've ever been. And uh, and I don't I've, I don't I've heard a lot. I've heard a lot of that um, in talking to folks in, in Orlando at the event. A lot of them are having great just told me straight up, like just yeah. without me asking that they're having great years. Um, yeah. With NAV, with GP. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so much worse if you were, you know, at a company where you're having a crappy year and then they're announcing, you know, changes and, and, and make you nervous. But, you know, this is this is kind of a, a little bit of a sideshow that will sort itself out over time. But in the meantime, you know, don't be distracted. Go to, you know, pick up the phone, call the customer just like you were going to, sell them the same thing you were going to. And uh, just keep an eye on, on how this stuff is evolving. Maybe you don't say business edition anymore, you know. But uh, there will be something. They're not. They got rid of the of the SMB product, but they didn't get rid of you know the SMB opportunity. You know they they haven't, yeah. they, haven't they, they haven't abandoned an SMB customer. They just abandoned a particular approach. Yeah, they just abandoned a particular approach they were using to go after that customer, and we're going to have a different approach. And from what I'm hearing and seeing. I, I frankly think things got to be a better and easier approach uh, once it's landed. So, uh, yeah, we've got to wait a little longer to have it. Yeah, I mean, and and it actually hasn't even been abandoned. Um, you know, the fi- like, I, I, were you, if you were talking about the finance and operations business edition, I mean that that it's still out there. It's still um, yep. it's still being iterated on. I mean, on on a monthly basis or whatever, they're still pushing features to it. Uh, because really, what they're doing on the nav side—not to go too, too far down that rabbit hole—but they're they're bringing that to, as they kept saying at the event, full nav. And yep. so I think, you know, that event, that that event, that that uh, that product is just just going to grow into what it becomes in whenever the spring of 2018. Um, I don't know how organically it'll keep just progressing or whether they'll do a big bang, but that's just where it's going. That's where that same product is going, maybe with a new yeah, name. We, and when you look at the path CRM took when it went from on-premise to cloud, you know, the first versions of the cloud CRM didn't have full feature parity with online. Right. Uh, and ultimately, now it has surpassed, you know, any of the features of online. They put all the investment there. Cloud enables things that couldn't be done on, uh, on-premise at all. So now the online product is the one that is the leading one, and the on-premise doesn't have feature parity with online anymore. So yeah, yeah. It, there's a, there's an eclipse that happens yeah. here. And, you know, step one is get something out there, there in the market. And step two is bring along, you know, all the features that we can that make sense. And step three is add more features that can't even occur, you know, in the on-premise product. And, and that whole thing flips. And yeah. I, I think that, I think they're kind of at that eclipse point now where it's going to, it's going to flip. And, you know, when it comes to features and capabilities, the cloud version is going to have more than on-premise. You know, yeah, it makes perfect sense, and that's a good word for it. I like that the sort of the eclipse uh, metaphor. 
Um, well, it certainly would eliminate lots of arguments because right now there's, you know, lots of customers and partners um, continue to argue. And I hear it all the time. Oh, you just don't understand. We have a certain segment of our customers that just will never be able to go to cloud. And you know, I hear that in the CRM space too. And I'm thinking, so w w why exactly can't they? I mean, I, I get, okay, right. there's federal regulations against the law. Got, got that one. But I think that a lot of partners and a lot of customers who feel like they can't go to cloud haven't even looked. They really haven't even done the yeah, comparison. I, I had the same assumptions. I had the same conversation with several um, sort of, I guess you could call it, you know, veteran um, uh, ERP consultants who said they have trouble making the. I think I might have even mentioned this in an article. They have trouble making the making the case to to their clients. The cloud is is, is the right approach, and and I didn't really interrogate them about it to really understand what, but they they. So often they, they, their clients land on cost as, as, as the main issue. But then on the flip side, you know, there are, um, if you're committed to cloud as a partner, there, there are partners com committed to cloud only solutions and they, they do great. They make, they, they go to inner circle and they, um, you know, they, uh, uh rank really high, I think in, in volume for, for Microsoft. So it's not certainly they're, not, they're, uh, they're they're outpacing the on-premise partners, you know, on yeah, orders of yeah. magnitude. I mean, it's, it, it, we, we've seen that in, in lots of the presentations uh, internally, you know, the cloud partners revenue growth is just skyrocketing versus the, the, the on-premise partner. So, I mean, financial argument is definitely not there to stay on premise. I think, I think a lot of partners and I, I've talked to even CRM partners that are like, you know, we're, we're on premise only. And you kind of poke into why, and you realize that they're just ignorant. They, they just haven't looked, don't want to look, got their arms crossed, blindfolds on. I don't want to see it. I don't want to change. And, um, I'm sure it's the same on the ERP side. So when they talk about, I can't talk customers into cloud. Well, of course not. You haven't even talked yourself into it yet. You know, there's no way you're going to convince someone else if you don't even believe it. Um, so they still got they still got a ways to go. I mean, it's a big channel. Uh, they've got lots of partners to move uh, to cloud. Those partners are very successful, having banner years. Uh, but they still got a lot of a lot of partners, and there are a lot of them in that room uh, that are just you know feet are stuck in concrete, just just can't or won't uh, you know make the move. And use well, and often use customers as their excuse, in my opinion. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I think the pressure is just going to build on, on those um, on those partners who are resistant, right? Um, I think uh, Marco Parasic on the nav side, especially, made that very clear that that the pressure is on if you're not going to um, if you're not going to adopt cloud, you're going to you're going to notice that your standing is, is going to change and. I mean, you know, he has a. I think you 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 some you you wrote about this very eloquently yourself that his his uh, his way with words um, can can tend to get reactions from people. But I think he I think he was serious, and I don't think he was he he was not making that up off, off you know shooting from the hip on that. That's that's plans and policy that Microsoft has in place with his just sort of his 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 wording, yep. <laughs> if you will. Yep. No, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, the stuff that gets blurted out, call them Freudian slips, you know, you can definitely read that there's some intent here, even if they walk back, you know, the next day a little bit, because, you know, the crowd's not ready to hear that. But you do hear where things are going. And when you look at the partners that were the most valuable partners to Microsoft five years ago, very few of those partners are still the most valuable partner partners to Microsoft. It's a whole new face of partner that is the most important part of Microsoft now, many of which born in the cloud didn't even exist, you know, five years ago and now are, are some of their most important partners. So that whole thing has shifted. And, you know, as a partner standing in the on-premise world in concrete, you have to have seen that happen. Um, and I, I don't know what they're still waiting for. Yeah, I think it maybe be... Um as one of my concluding points here, I, I, I don't know if we mentioned this earlier, but I think it's very interesting to just um, kind of go back to, to that point and that message that came across at, um, you know, that, that I think you and I maybe both took from the, uh, the directions event, but, um, but word that I think a very similar message was being, um, was being delivered at, 
at the at the Inner Circle event, which was you know something that's not really promoted. It's not a public event, but the partners were listening to and hearing from other Microsoft uh, upper management. And, and certainly, I guess the point there is just that it was not a one-off. Um, it was not a one-off message being delivered in Orlando. It was also being delivered, you know, elsewhere by by sort of in sync from other from other people you at know, Microsoft. And, and in, in my conversations with some of the Microsoft people that were actually delivering those messages, the, the one thing they were telling me was the, the timing of this couldn't be worse. You know, we, we, we had this directional change. Uh, we, we got a message to deliver, but we weren't quite ready to deliver it yet. We still need some, we know that there'll be some obvious questions that we'd like to have had some answers for, but you know, here comes directions right now, ready yeah. or not. Here came inner circle. Here comes directions now next week ignite this stuff's all piling up and yeah, yeah. They've, got, they've got some more heat to walk through because it just there just hasn't been enough time it would have been awesome if all this stuff happened in december and they had time to really get all this stuff out yeah but, it's almost like a systemic issue or not systemic but sort of a a clash of two eras here sort of where you have your annual these annual events that are scheduled months of, months in advance and you know you can't be that agile with a with an in-person conference but and then on the other side, you've got Microsoft trying to be, I guess, more agile is the word, but they're just they're sort of working at a at a, a, a cadence that's not sort of focused on calendar years to get these things uh, executed on, and that's clashing. Uh, a few people raised that point uh, yeah. in Orlando. I, 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 I think you have to kind of applaud them because you know coming into these conferences right now on you know this recent direction change. They had a couple of choices. They probably could have just kept that close to their vest. And you know what? We don't have enough to say. We know this is going to start some controversy. We're just not going to tell partners what we're doing yet. And, and that would have been kind of classic Microsoft to just keep us in the dark, you know, for way too long. Uh, and just let the conference go as planned. Don't say anything about any of this. Uh, but they didn't do that. They, you know, they kind of stepped up and said, you know, we know we're going to take a couple punches in the face. Um, that we're not ready to defend, uh, you know, with, with the information, but better that they know. And, uh, I, you know, personally, I prefer that to the alternative, you know, mm -hmm. just keeping us in the dark, you know? Yeah. If those are the choices, uh, you know, work it out in the sunlight and, and, uh, be constructive. Yeah, and ho it, right? hopefully backlash and, and controversy like this doesn't scare them back into an opaqueness, but, um, I don't, I don't think it will. I think they... Yeah, I think it's a sign yeah. of different leadership and, and, and a different yep. approach. I agree. I mean, I, clearly they weren't entirely prepared for it because, you know, this, the follow-up session was going to be in a smaller room, and they moved it to a, back to the larger room, and it was standing room only. So I don't think they were entirely right. expecting the reaction they got. But hopefully, you know, they, that doesn't scare them back into, oh, we need to keep partners in the dark longer because uh, I think they're better off with this path. All right, agreed. Um, yeah, any anything else you wanted to uh, call call out of, of note from uh, from the past week? Uh, you know, we launched our new Rapid Start version. All right. Yeah. Very nice. So that's uh, that's available now. To uh, to is that just for available for new clients, or is that something that if you're an existing client, you get that as well? So this is sold through partners. And uh, we've kind of rejiggered our solution to focus on CRM partners as opposed to non-CRM partners. So uh, we really redesigned it looking through the lens of a CRM partner, giving them a way to build scale in their practice and less about let's get some non-CRM partners to start selling CRM. Uh, frankly, we just went the way the flow was going. Uh, right. Not, not enough CRM partners were activating and Dynamics partners were. We hadn't built the product for Dynamics Partners in the first place, so we just went in and, and reconfigured it to be specifically for CRM Partners and getting lots of activity around that, so that's very exciting. I'm going to be out at uh, CRM Extreme. You going there as well, I hope? Yeah, I plan to be there. All right, cool. Well, we'll see if we have yeah. enough stuff to talk about. Maybe we'll do a live remote out there. But Yeah, then. those are always fun. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, we'll have uh, some of the same executives that we just mentioned, I think, out there. Um, Alyssa Taylor. James Phillips, yep. uh, I believe Ron Huddleston will be there too. He will. Probably a little more refined messaging by then. Yeah, <laughs> there should be a good conversation at that one for sure. So, uh, well, Steve, thanks again for for being here. It's always always fun to chat with you, and uh, and and yeah, nice nice to see you in person uh, this this week too. Yeah, thanks, Jason. This 
This has been another episode of the MSDW Podcast. My thanks to Steve Mordu for joining today. And thank you for listening. We always appreciate your feedback. You can reach me by email, jgumpert at msdynamicsworld.com. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World signing off.